Okay, so hello Lyle, um, I'd like to welcome you uh, to the show. Uh, I'm sure many, many people who are subscribers to the, to the Unshackled uh, will know of Lyle Shelton. Uh, Lyle Shelton uh, is the head of the Australian Christian Lobby. Uh, he is a freedom fighter, I'd like to call him, for the rights of many uh, Christians and non-Christians for their right of uh, freedom of religion, of uh, freedom of speech, and, and uh, Lyle has been there for many of us, especially over uh, the debacle of safe schools uh, and the fight for um, retaining the status quo on marriage, which uh, many, which split obviously our readership, but. Uh, as a Christian, personally, I uh, do admire Lyle's work here. So, um, so Lyle, I'd, I'd like to um, firstly ask you um, if you um, perceive uh, to, there to be another a big moral issue that can really, uh, the right or the conservatives and Christians can unite behind a big moral issue facing Australia uh, past this uh, marriage debate. Uh, what do you think that that issue is? What do you think that we need to be uh, fighting to preserve or to protect at the moment? Well, well, Jacob, thanks very much for your kind words. And uh, our line is a little bit scratchy here, but uh, I'll do my best. Um, I think the thing we need to really unite behind as, as Christians and, and people who are concerned about the future of our nation is the importance of keeping the public square free uh, for freedom of speech uh, about marriage, about uh, what the Bible says about um, human sexuality and human flourishing. Uh, I think we're in real risk of what we believe as Christians uh, of uh, becoming hate speech and for people being taken off to uh, tribunals and fined as bigots simply because we seek to uphold a biblical view of human flourishing when it comes to sexuality and uh, marriage and the family. So uh, this is a real challenge for us going forward and I think um, uh, this battle you know, is only just beginning now that marriage has re been redefined and uh, we have laws in our books which um, coerce people to conform to that view of marriage whether they believe it or not and uh, that has big implications for churches, for Christian schools, for Christian charities and for individuals who simply want to uh, voice a Christian view in the public square. Well, well certainly um, we, we can all see that uh, with uh, the Tasmanian Archbishop being dragged into the anti-discrimination tribunal in Tasmania for, for frankly you know handing out a rather benign uh, pamphlet, you know, about why marriage is, is, is a sacred entity, you know, um, constructed by God and not by, you know, the, the courts of man. And he, you know, he's been dragged into this uh, anti-discrimination tribunal, uh, simply uh, almost could be unconstitutional because in Australia, under 100, in our constitution, we have freedom of religion. And that's being fragrantly uh, disregarded, I would say. Um, but as um, the head of the ACL, what would you want to see from the Ruddock Inquiry? What would you like uh, to come out of the Ruddock Inquiry uh, to protect not only the freedom of religion of Christians, but I guess also of Jews and of Muslims and of Sikhs who also have um, a traditional view on marriage and a traditional view on how, frankly, they want to raise their children as well? Yeah, that's, that's right, Jacob. Um, I, I'd want to see come out of the Ruddick inquiry, um, and this is the review that the Turnbull government set up um, late last year to try and, I, I call it, you know, to try and put Humpty back together again, having smashed freedom of speech and yeah. freedom of religion uh, by the passage of same-sex marriage laws that contained, you know, no uh, protection for uh, those of us, you know, for the five million Australians who voted no. Um, what we need to see come out of that Ruddick review is, is putting Humpty back together so that there is freedom in this country to express a different point of view and that should start with ensuring that um, a case of the Tasmanian Archbishop, um, Archbishop Julian Porteous, that that can never happen again. At the moment, all of us who 
want to voice out loud uh, a view about marriage are in danger of being taken to a tribunal and um, the dangers are, are, are greater in some states than others uh, depending on how the state-based anti-discrimination law is interpreted. Tasmanians is certainly the worst but uh, similar laws exist in other states and territories. Um, that, that vulnerability that saw Archbishop Porteous dragged before a tribunal uh, needs to be um, needs to be fixed. So that's the first thing Ruddick needs to do. I don't have a lot of confidence that um, the Parliament will, will do that because it will require legislation. And this was all argued last year when the same-sex marriage legislation was going through and it was rejected. So uh, unless there's political will to, to put Humpty back together again, uh, we could see uh, ordinary people, uh, archbishops, um, school principals uh, being fined as bigots for teaching a Christian view of marriage. Um, we could see uh, religious charities losing their charitable status potentially in the future, as has happened to Family First in New Zealand uh, because of its views on marriage. It's seen as uh, not in accordance with uh, New Zealand values anymore. And I could list many, many other examples of people who have been persecuted at work, uh, even here in Australia before the law changed, uh, by diversity officers in big companies who, who come and tap them on the shoulder for expressing uh, a view on marriage. Uh, we saw a young 18-year-old sack uh, from her job in Canberra because she made a private Facebook post about marriage being between one man and one woman and I could go on and on so there's a lot of work for the Ruddick um, committee to do uh, but um, at the end of the day it will come down to the will of uh, politicians uh, to to um, re-establish free speech and free freedom of religion but you can expect Jacob this to be uh, opposed at every turn by the same-sex marriage lobby by these people who fly under uh, the rainbow flag, which is supposedly about love and tolerance. Uh, these people are um, absolutely intolerant to any other point of view and uh, they will oppose uh, any measures uh, that uh, might come out of the Ruddick uh, inquiry to allow freedom of speech and freedom of religion and a diversity of views about marriage uh, to be allowed to be held in Australia. Well, well Lyle, I, I certainly think that the world hasn't really seen this type of... Uh totalitarianism since the well the Soviet Union fell that there is this uniformity of thought that there is uh, that, that there has to be followed otherwise you are deemed to uh, be um, you know a lesser citizen you're sacked from your job sometimes you're abused in schools I've heard many instances of Christian kids being said that um, you're the ones who hate the gays and that's 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 something that's prescribed on them so not only are they being sacked from jobs, uh, not only are they not being given the freedom to, to choose to uh, follow their religious conviction in things like cake baking, but um, the schools, the schools have been kind of a hotbed for this um, hyper-politically correct thought. Uh, and, and this is where we move into, into safe schools. Um, so really, like this comes from the bottom of my heart. Um, how is how is decent people can can we help the ACL? How can we help fight against the uh, the position of safe schools? It, it's so many on the radical Marxist left take the Benjamin Laws of the world take. Um, how can we fight against that? How can we, um, I guess, as Christians, as conservatives, as Australians, say that you know it is our right to bring up our children how we see fit? We don't want our children seeing things like minus 18, where they've got links to pornography websites, uh, uh, like the tool shed, uh, sex toys, and you know other, uh, you know, incredibly nasty resources. How can we fight against uh, this indoctrination? Well, the, the first thing that we all need to do straight away is to engage with the Ruddick inquiry and the Ruddick review, and to make sure we put a submission in before. Uh, February 14, which is the cutoff date. Uh, we have some information about how people can do that on the ACL website, acl.org.au. And uh, it does go to the question of safe schools as well, because one of the things we're encouraging people to say to Philip Ruddick's review is that parents should have the right uh, to, have, to not have their children exposed to the types of safe schools, gender fluid ideology and radical LGBTIQ sex education that you just mentioned. Parents should have the right to say no to that, and that's part of freedom of uh, religion. 
and uh, that needs to be made known uh, to the Ruddock inquiry. So um, everyone needs to put in a submission before February 14. That's pretty easily done. Um, I've got some doc points up on our website that people can follow to put in their own words um, and uh, the links of where to email those uh, are there on our website at acl.org.au. And, and I would encourage, you know, every, every uh, subscriber of ours um, to, to check out ACL, to, to give to ACL. And if you're a Christian, um, obviously there's, there's a sense of duty there, but if you're not, uh, the ACL is fighting for the right of freedom of speech for most Australians, and they're, 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 real, they're really a pioneer. They're one of the few who actually uh, give us a voice uh, in the freedom of speech arena, uh, and, and who fight the totalitarian uh, kind of radical left-wingers. So I would encourage, you know, uh, everyone to jump on the ACL website to, uh, to obviously help their cause and to donate. If you don't have time to donate, uh, because this all makes a difference. Um, I, I've, got a, I've got a couple of gotcha questions, Lyle. I'm sorry about this. But After saying all those nice things, <laughs> okay, I'll brace myself. Thanks. Yeah, David. I'm just giving you a bit of forewarning. Um, okay. So in the past, you said it wasn't gays uh, tarnishing marriage; it was straight people. Do you, do you think that this this is ever likely to change, or do you just think that as a society, the the great values of the Judeo Christian worldview have uh, sunk to such a low that marriage is is turned into you know a meaningless document, and people simply don't understand that uh, the meaning and the significance of it anymore? Look, I think um, we as heterosexual people um, over the last probably 30, 40, 50 years um, ha have succumbed to a Hollywood vision of marriage uh, where it's uh, only about romance, romantic love. Now, that is an aspect of marriage. It's a wonderful, lovely aspect of marriage uh, in, in our uh, mar marital relationship. But um, that's, uh, that's been sort of redefined already to um, include romantic love whether you're married or not and, and marriage has been demeaned uh, by our popular entertainment. And so what we've seen with the same-sex marriage movement is just the logical extrapolation of the sexual revolution of the 1960s where um, it's just all about whatever feelings you have and whatever urges you have, you should pursue that and, and it doesn't really matter with whom um, whether it's male or female. So we've, we've ended up in, in this mess culturally uh, because, of, um, because of a false view of love and, and marriage that's come through over decades. And um, look, I'm optimistic that we can reclaim a true vision of marriage because we're seeing um, more and more in our culture that the romantic um, uh, view of, of marriage, and, and I, I don't mean romance is good, I'm not trying to say we shouldn't have romance in marriage, but um, what has been unleashed by the sexual revolution, the whole, if it feels good, do it. Um, you know, the, the idea that uh, sex is something that should just be open and, and happening all the time with whomever, whenever, uh, et cetera, et cetera. We're seeing that play out badly through things like the Harvey Weinstein scandal, um, as, as many women have been abused by men simply trying to live out um, the Hugh Hefner playboy values of the yeah. sexual revolution. So things are coming undone at a great rate of knots. They're particularly coming undone for young women uh, who are increasingly preyed upon by boys who have unrealistic sexual expectations of them that have been generated by um, the sexual revolution. And um, what we're starting to realise more and more, we're even seeing articles written about this now from, from women who are saying let's have a return to um, gentlemen <laughs> again as, a, a, and the ideals of what it means to be a gentleman being restored to our culture. Now these things go to the heart of civil society and I think um, a, proper, a proper view of marriage is at the heart of that and the heart of human flourishing. So I think we will see a correction because of the pain and the turmoil that our false views of love um, have had uh, over these last several decades. And uh, I think it's important for those of us, uh, particularly people of faith, uh, to do our best to model um, human flourishing through um, marriage the way that it, it is um, set out for us in the, in the Bible um, as, as one of um, you know deep love and human flourishing, but based on commitment and fidelity and monogamy and all these values that have uh, gone out of fashion. Well, the sexual liberation of the 1960s uh, has it really opened a can of worms up. Obviously, the 
fatherlessness in the United States uh, as a result of the sexual revolution has uh, increased incarceration rates. You know, it's, it's bred a, a toxic culture in its own right of uh, drugs, crime and violence. Um, so I think that as Christians, we really need to point out the value of monogamy, uh, the value of having some kind of a worth of yourself, you know, not being an expendable sexual object, but uh, being able to love uh, another man or another woman, um, you know, and, and joining, you know, as one flesh in that Christian worldview and uh, creating a family. And, and certainly that's something that is, is really overlooked. Uh, and, and as you said really well before Lyle, um, it's that Hollywood cast, uh, casting couch, uh, Harvey Weinstein uh, culture that is really perpetuating this degeneracy of society. And, and um, certainly if, if the ACL uh, could do some work to promote um, kind of actual respectful relationships, not, not ones that, um, that the radical left wants to do, but respectful relationships between men and women, um, certainly you know i would um you know accept that with open arms well i think that's got to be the role of the church uh, the, the church as a christian community uh, on earth needs to model this uh, to the world uh, i mean acl can do its bit we're a political advocacy organization but uh, we really do need the community of god's people uh, to, to model the truth and um, we probably haven't done a great job at that we've had our problems in the church uh, much of the um, water of culture has got into the, the, the boat of the church and, and um, our people are affected by the toxic uh, culture that we live in but uh, we have to uh, push against that and, and to model something better well, that well, gives people a greater hope. To be in the world but not, not be of the world of course. Yeah exactly exactly and model something positive to the world and, and I think um, by and large you know most Christian communities do that but um, that's obviously you know ignored by the media but uh, we've probably got to get smarter about how we can promote um, the, the great things that we have as Christians to offer to a society that is really hurting and, and not finding fulfilment uh, sexually and relationally uh, through what um, our culture teaches. Yes, and, and, and just uh, I've got two more to finish up with Lyle. I understand you're a busy man, uh, so I'll try and keep this concise, you know, action packed uh, like a diehard <laughs> Bruce Willis movie. That's what we're going for here. Um, so obviously euthanasia is just being legalised in Victoria and uh, it was a prominent uh, Catholic hospital, I, I can't remember the name, that was refusing to offer that, um, to, off to, to offer to kill people essentially. Um, do you think that eventually the government will coerce uh, religious hospitals uh, to, to kill people uh, or do you think there is some hope for freedom of religion? Look, I think it's... Um quite likely that in the future, if, if this law, um, which has been passed in Victoria, uh, comes into effect in 2019, next year, um, I think down the track we could see uh, religious hospitals compelled um, to perform euthanasia. I think that's many years down the track, but this is the way that people who hold these views operate. Uh, they already compel uh, Christian doctors to participate in abortions, uh, the killing of the unborn, uh, by uh, mandating that a, a, a doctor, with even one with a conscientious objective, has to refer a woman um, uh, to another doctor uh, for an abortion. So, so there is that coercive nature with abortion. Um, I, I see no, re no reason why uh, these people won't push that uh, coerciveness uh, when it comes to euthanasia on Christian hospitals uh, eventually. Um, you know, we're seeing it as we discussed earlier with, with um, the coercion around speech with regard to marriage. So uh, we are dealing with um, totalitarian ideas um, that, are, that are coming forth and unless they're resisted, um, we, we could see more and more people of faith and people of good conscience uh, in trouble in the future. So it's very, very serious. And now is the time to push back because if we leave it, it will become too late. Yes, um, and, but what we, we speak about totalitarianism in one sense of, of uh, compelling or, or preventing certain speech. But we also see another form of totalitarianism or of extremism, uh, and th this really, this really disgusted me, Lyle. Um, 
uh, the, the hate mail that, that you received personally, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but someone drew a, a, a Hitler-esque moustache on you. Um, there was a, obviously a bombing of the ACL that we wrote about that, that the mainstream media refused to cover. There, there was pretty much, in my opinion, an act of terrorism. Um, and there was also a suspicious parcel sent to the ACL. So, so how, how, do you, how do you feel for your own safety with, with these radical extremists um, on the prowl? Yeah, um, look, that's been a challenge for um, our team and, and myself uh, here in Canberra. We've had to um, beef up security. In fact, we had no security at the office prior to the bombing. Uh, we, we now, you know, lock the doors. Um, we have swipe cards um, and an electronic security system. We have video surveillance. Um, I, I've had to have uh, video surveillance and an alarm system put at my private house because uh, a prominent same-sex marriage advocate, this is someone who, you know, it's not a, not a troll, this is someone who participates in the mainstream of the debate, a man named Michael Barnett, put my home address on the internet uh, as a way to try and intimidate uh, me out of um, speaking. Uh, so, so you know, these people um, are not nice people, um, and they, these are the mainstream people I'm talking about, not just the Twitter trolls. Um, they're a different league altogether, but uh, some of their own mainstream operators uh, use intimidation uh, tactics. So um, this has been a real challenge for us, uh, but uh, we're determined um, not to be coward. Um, I am full of admiration for the staff here in the Canberra office. They received many packages of, um, of, of uh, glitter, of abusive material in the mail. We had eggs thrown at the office after the bombing. Um, we, we have had white powder sent to the office, um, intercepted by the Canberra Mail Centre, which closed down the Canberra Mail Centre on more than one occasion. Um, uh, this, this is a very you know, contested area when, when you speak out uh, on these issues, but um, we're determined um, not to, to be silent and um, I'm very thankful for the great team of people we have here who are very committed to this cause. Yeah, well, really, you shouldn't be you know, fearful for your own safety. You shouldn't be fearful for your, potentially even your own life um, doing the work that you see that um, you know that uh, it's you know it's your work. Uh, I guess that you see to fulfil your duty as a Christian, and and really to be to be bullied, but to say that you know I'm going to have some spine. You know I'm not going to cower into these thugs. Like Lyle, I really admire that. I'm sure people listening to this podcast will admire that as well. Um, not many people will sacrifice their livelihood, you know, in pursuit of the truth, in pursuit of freedom. And it's uh, certainly admirable. Um, I've, I've got to ask you this. I know it's a cheap one that Waleed Ali would probably give you on the project. But um, it's, say, if you were Tony Abbott and um, your, 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 um, your sister was a lesbian, uh, would, would you attend that wedding or would you um, conscientiously object to, uh, to attending? And I, I know that's a lousy question, but it's just something that I think many of... Yeah, look, that, that's a hard question. Um, look, uh, oh, you know, obviously if, if um, my sister or relative was in a, a, a relationship uh, like that, um, you know, I would obviously lovingly um, express my disagreement. Um, I think, you know, siblings can, can agree to disagree on certain matters. If it came down to a wedding, um, Look, I, I don't really know what I would do. I, I may attend out of um, out of uh, my loyalty to uh, my sibling, uh, just to show love and, and support in that way. But um, but obviously they would know uh, that my being there in no way was an endorsement of what uh, they were doing. But um, a, a, as a human and as someone in um, uh, in that situation, um, you know, I, I may attend. Um, you know, or, or I may not. I, I can't. I'm sorry to not give you a clear answer on that. Um, you know, it's a deeply personal thing. I can understand uh, a Tony Abbott situation where he, he might attend his sister's wedding, even though he disagrees with it. Um, so, and, and if she's happy to have him there on that basis, uh, because his family, um, you know, that, that can be an act of grace in the family. I don't think those sort of things are, are clear cut. So I think, you know, people could, could go either way. Sorry, that's a little bit rambly, but um, and it's not clear. But um, I do think that's something that that could go either way. 
Yeah, I, I can understand that. Obviously, that's something that you would probably come to out of prayer and a reflection, obviously, understanding that, you know, grace is a big component to um, Christian thought as well. So it, it, it's probably one of the hardest things to, to think about. I, I certainly wouldn't know what I would do either. Um, yes, but um, I'd just like to thank you for coming on the show, Lyle. Um, thanks for speaking to us. You know, we, we've... We're a smaller page. We've got about 10,000 likes on, on Facebook at the moment, but you know we're growing, and um, and we really appreciate you know what we call freedom fighters like yourself uh, coming on to to speak with us, and uh, certainly helps um, you know expand the platform. And obviously, a lot of people uh, in the Unshackled would like to to help out with the ACL. So um, I, I'm hoping that maybe maybe in the future we could. Uh, we could speak again about these issues. All right, thank you very much, Jake. It's a pleasure to speak to you, and um, you know, wish you all the best in your endeavour. And I love these sort of initiatives that just help uh, get the word out to, to people on different platforms. So good on you for, for doing it, and um, thanks again for the opportunity. All right, take care, Lyle. See you. See you.